So today I want to talk about something really important that not a lot of people know about, and that is constructor methods for scenes. So if you don't know what a constructor method, it's essentially just a function that you have on a class so that whenever you make a new copy of that class, you can pass in initial values to kind of set it up. So for this example, I have an enemy, which basically has a health, an attack, and a display name. And we want to make a system so that whenever we set up or instantiate a new enemy, we can assign these values directly in the most efficient way way possible. Now, if you've been using Godot for any amount of time, you know that we would first load in the scene file, make a new instance, and then assign any properties that we want, or we can do this in reverse order. So we assign the properties and then add it as a child. But there's a couple things I don't like about this approach. Um, the first one being that this is like super messy. So it's going to clutter up wherever you're actually instantiating the scene. It's going to make it an absolute mess. Like there's three lines here for basically setting up a single enemy plus the line that's responsible for loading it. So that can be optimized. And then in addition to this, we don't know all the properties that we need to set up the enemy. So let's say I'm coming back to my code from like six months of not reading this enemy script and I forget that there's an attack value. Now, obviously you should continue to like document and read up on your scripts, but if I forget about any properties when I'm setting up a scene instance, then that could potentially cause errors. So we want to be able to catch these errors while we're coding rather than when we actually run the game and have it crash. So because of this, the goal is we want basically one line of code that is able to create a new enemy reference, let us assign the initial values, and then give us that reference back so that we can add it as a child. So the way I'm gonna do this is first move this preload over to my enemy script. And this way the enemy can load in its own scene file so that we can instantiate it. And then I'm also gonna wanna verify that my enemy is its own class. This is important just so that we can add a static function, which is what we're gonna do next. So we're gonna make a static function here and I'm gonna call this new underscore enemy. Now, if you don't know what a static function is, it's essentially just a function that we can call on a class without needing to have an instance of the class present. So I can literally just say enemy dot new enemy without actually instantiating the script beforehand. And this method in this case is going to create a new enemy instance, set up all of its properties, and then return that enemy instance back to wherever we're calling it from so that we can add it as a child of the scene. So in order to pass in the initial properties, we're just gonna make arguments for all of these right here. So I'm gonna say health, which is an int, attack, which is an int, and display name, which is a string, and you'll see how these are used in a second. And then lastly, I just wanna make sure that I am returning the enemy class because we're passing the reference back once again. And inside of here, I wanna do basically the same thing. So with our enemy scene, I can say var new enemy, set the type to enemy and set it equal to enemy scene dot instantiate. Next, I'll set up the initial values for this new enemy instance. So new enemy dot health is equal to the health argument. New enemy dot attack is equal to the attack argument. And then finally, new underscore enemy dot display name is equal to the display name argument. And once we've done that, we can now just return the reference so that we can add it as a child later on. So we're gonna just return new enemy. So with all this setup, we now have a constructor method for the scene, and we're gonna use this in the game script again. So basically I'm gonna convert all this code to something that's a bit more readable. So let's comment this out. And I'm gonna say var new enemy, and we're gonna set it equal to the enemy class, which is what we defined right here. And since this is a static function, we can say enemy dot new enemy. And since our parameters or arguments are required in this case, we're gonna get an error until we define everything that we need to actually set up this new instance. So we give it a health value, which I'm gonna say like 90. We give it an attack, I'll give it 10. And then we give it a display name, which I'll say like uh, weak slime. And since this is returning the new enemy reference, I can then simply call add child new enemy. And you can see how much more readable this method is. Like we only have two lines in this case for setting up the enemy. Now, if you do want to make this even shorter, you can technically do this. Um, just paste that line inside of here. And then you just have a single line, which I think is actually pretty handy. But anyways, I just thought I'd share this method to help you guys out. Um, if you do instantiate scenes, 
In this way, I would consider switching over to this new system here, since this is a bit more modular as it's kind of keeping the logic required for setting a scene up inside of that scene itself, which I think makes a lot more sense. And then in my opinion, it's also a lot easier to read. Again, you can store this in a variable and then do this in like two lines or whatever if you want, but I think this just looks a lot uh, more readable. So I definitely favor this method. Uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments if you guys prefer or don't prefer this method, or if there are any other workflows you guys actually use for doing something like this. I did see that some people were doing like a resource, so they'd have another script which is called like enemy data, and they'd basically create a new resource which you can have a constructor method with the init function, and they'd pass in all the like initial data to the enemy data resource, and then they would basically just do this method with instantiating the scene, and then instead of setting each property, they would just set the enemy data property of the new enemy, and then when the enemy was ready, so in the ready function, they would just pull from that enemy data resource and assign all the properties from there, which in my opinion isn't as streamlined um, and then you also have an extra script kind of laying around, so it's a bit more cluttery, I guess. But that's also another alternative if you run into any issues with this system. Before we end, I want to shout out the current members. So we have five members right now. Uh, thank you guys all so much, and special thanks to the top tier members. So we have Pumamori, who is a groundbreaking Godower, and also Abdulahab Ayub, which... Again, I think I'm pronouncing that right, but let me know if I'm not. They're also a groundbreaking Godower, which is just amazing. So anyways, thank you guys so much for your support. If you want to become a member, there's the button on the channel. If you do want to support the channel, that is probably the best way to do it. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching the video. As always, it is extremely appreciated. And I hope this taught you something new or at least gave you an idea on how you can improve instantiation in your game project. Anyways, though, have a great week and I will see you guys in the next one.